although the paramedics have had all the glory, as it were, and, and they uh, clearly they saved my life and brought me back to life. To me, Barbara was an important component, a vital component, because without her, I think Lynn would have just panicked and probably given up. Well, uh, the day started uh, cold and because I helped look after the estate here, uh, one of our little old ladies was complaining about ice on the steps. So I went downstairs to get some grit and salt to clear the, the steps and I came up um, and came in to tell my wife that I'd come back. And I don't remember, I don't even remember coming up in the lift. Comes to the drawer and at my desk, said, oh, I'm feeling a bit, uh, bit dizzy. And so he turns to, to walk to the sofa. And with that, he just completely toppled over. And I didn't want to slap on the back, but I didn't know what to do. So I called my daughter, who's a pediatrician. And I said, he's fallen down. I don't want to slap him around, but how do I wake him up? She said, well, First check, is he breathing? No, he's not breathing. So all of a sudden, <laughs> I realized that, that this was a bigger problem. And uh, she said, can you find a pulse? And of course, I'm useless at finding pulses anyway. And I said, look, you know, I'm trying, but I don't feel anything. So she said, well, call 999. So uh, of course I did immediately. And Barbara said, okay, well, you should uh, start administering CPR. I said. Well, you know, thinking about it, I'd already started pumping his chest a little bit with one hand while I was talking to her with, with the other. And she explained to me how to do it. So I put my phone on speaker and put it on his chest and started administering CPR. And within about two minutes then, uh, the ambulance service arrived and uh, he took over. So, you know, what a relief. But Barbara was fantastic because she, she, you know, she talked me through how to do it. What really stood out for me was how calm Lynn, the wife, was. How she was very, she responded to everything we said. She did exactly what we told her. She'd got her hands on him already, on Michael already starting CPR, although it wasn't quite at the right rate and pressure. But she'd got her hands on. She was open to everything that we said. She kept communicating. She was amazing herself. She just did everything she was told. And she kept saying, you know, it's getting closer, it's getting closer. So I thought, well, as soon as they come, everything will be fine. Uh, but of course, what I didn't realize is that survival rates for sudden cardiac arrest for over 70s is about 5%. So, you know, I just pumping away there, thinking, okay, they're coming and it'll be all right. And it was. So, you know, it was fantastic. I think that genuinely the fact that they were really quick to call and summons help and start CPR was probably what made the biggest difference in his survival. Mr Woolley's case is, is um, testament to that. He had really good CPR. He received CPR from me. He had several um, shocks with a, with a defibrillator um, and he received no cardiac arrest, intra-arrest drugs, um, which there's been lots of research around over, over the last sort of decade or so about the use of intra-arrest drugs. And I think his case just sort of demonstrates really that good CPR, good early defibrillation, early calls for help what saves people's lives. To Lynn, to see me laying there, she was depressed and almost wanted to give up because she didn't know what was going to happen. How could she, how could she do anything? But Barbara kept her at it. And Barbara is as vital a component for me as that paramedic crew. So yeah, we were, it, it just makes the job more worthwhile in a way, you hear little things like that. I think it, it kind of reminds you of the exact reason that you, you joined as a paramedic. What they've done is allow me to walk Emma down the aisle with her partner. So for that, I'm really pleased. <laughs>